So I'm out here in my solar trailer today. I thought I would run through how I hooked my system up with the PV just to help you guys out, maybe give you some ideas on how to size up your system. First things you wanna look for in your system is typically either on the side of the unit or on the top of the unit. There's gonna be a sticker like this on the side. Here you can see we have max PV input voltage or voltage open circuit of 145 volts DC. That is gonna give you your guideline for how you're gonna hook up your solar panels. And this is the solar array that I've chosen. So I got a really good deal on 310 watt solar panels. Now the way I have them hooked up is I have the top three hooked up together in series and then I have the bottom three hooked up together in series and then I have them going to a combiner box which connects them in parallel and then runs into the trailer itself. So each panel open voltage is 40.2 volts and then when I series them up in three that's going to give me 120.6 volts open circuit. So with my panels three in series for 120.6 volts and then paralleled up into two, that gives me each panel does 9.82 amps and then timesing by two is 19.64 amps. So that's just under 20 amps, which allows me to run 10 gauge PV wire from the solar combiner box over into the trailer. If I had it done, let's say two, in series and then three in parallel that would have given me 29.46 amps which then i would have need to have found some eight gauge pv wire to run from my solar panel into my trailer so the size of the conductor i was able to keep smaller by going with 120.6 volts now some of the benefits of going with a higher voltage is you're going to get more electricity coming in uh, during the early morning and during the evening and a steady throughout the day and some of the downsides is my grow watt unit actually has to work harder because it has to convert a higher voltage lower amperage down to a lower voltage and a higher amperage whereas if I was to do two in series and then three in parallel I would have my voltage would be brought down and my amperage would be brought up so it's kind of the opposite and it would give you a lot stronger during midday and a little bit less during the early morning and a little bit less during the late evening. And a few questions I've gotten about my array over the time that I've had it on YouTube is two main questions is one, how come I raised up my solar array so high off the ground and is that necessary? It is ideal if I was running bifacial panels, which I wish I had it done, but these are just regular. If I had bifacial, this would be perfect. Uh, another reason why I raised it up off the ground is because the lawn maintenance around here is done with a riding lawnmower and it doesn't have the mulcher on it, it has the chute. And if you've ever been around one of them, when they lift up a rock into the blades and shoot that out, I didn't want to risk having that damage my panel. Uh, another reason why I raised it up so high is because I actually have a golf cart and I wanted to be able to park the golf cart underneath the array and keep it out of the rain and the sun. So I have my solar panels running down off the array. I have them connected, the three from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and then they come down into here. And then my second ray on top, I have again hooked up the same way and comes into here. So these are running about 120 volts and then they run through this switch. Now I wanted to have this disconnect here that's before my combiner box. So it would, if I disconnect here, I'm dealing with less amperage over here, but still the same 120 volts. So I can actually disconnect this. And then also, because I followed the code regulations as close as I could, which I encourage you all to read the code for your area if you are gonna hook up an array, I can actually move this and lock this out in case any work needs to be done. And then I have my homemade combiner box, which I've made videos on in the past. And this combiner box has two fuses, as well as a breaker, surge protection, and I also have a GFCI protection. And then down here, I've run some AC wiring out, and I still haven't hooked it up, but I can run outdoor lights off of this box here, which I have a smart switch hooked up to the Wi-Fi, so I can have a scene set, have them come on at dusk, and then turn off at dawn. This is a GFCI protected AC outlet, just a double. And then this is a sawn off smart plug 
so that if I want to charge my golf cart lithium batteries to 50% and not a full state of charge during storage, then I can set a timer on that plug and run it for however long I need it for. And then looking underneath the panels, you can see I have it going, I believe my main negative's over there, then positive, negative, positive, negative, and then the positive runs down and over to the combiner box, and same on the bottom. Another important thing, another reason why I chose to go with the ground mount system is that you need to check your local regulations. Uh, if you are planning on DIYing some panels onto your building or structure, be prepared to lose that building or structure. Because if you have a fire in said building or structure and the fire department shows up and they see that you don't have the rapid dissipation uh, or the main disconnect hooked up in the proper places, then they'll just let your building burn because it is gonna put their lives at risk. What the rapid dissipation device does is if there is a fire, as soon as they throw that main disconnect, it rapidly dissipates all the electricity, which allows them to spray water onto your house or even get up and do what they need to do on your roof in order to put the fire out. So if you are planning on installing any panels onto a building or structure, be prepared to lose that building or structure. Uh, another thing I had done was I have actually grounded out my panels to the same grounding plate that my AC unit is running off of. Now, if you are running a grid tie system, you need to be careful and research the grounding because if you put a grounding plate in for your panels and then you have a grounding plate for your house, in between those two plates, if, if lightning strikes over on one spot, it could run over and connect the two with electricity and fry out your whole entire house. So you need to make sure that you research properly how to set grounding plates and to do grounding and bonding and neutral ground bonds and all those fun things if you do decide to get into solar. And the way that I had installed the panels onto my structure is I basically framed it out like half of a roof so I just have my top ridge and then my bottom and I just put rafters down into there. And then I wanted to have one of the rafters on either side tucked under the panels. So I just flip my brackets over so that there's actually a bit of an overhang on the panel on these uh, roof trusses. And then what I had done to join the two panels together is I actually overlapped the brackets here just to get the panels a little tighter because in the manufacturer specs, I believe it only called for about an inch gap in between the panels. So I had just lapped them on top of each other so that they would get closer together. And that kept my uh, ridge here less than 10 feet. So for material wise, that was a benefit because it's cheaper. My solar wires come down in through the combiner box, they get combined and then I have them running through a flexible conduit, which runs down into the ground and then runs underneath the patio stones I have beside my trailer and then actually into the trailer. Then the solar wires run up through the bottom of the trailer. They come up here and then I also have another disconnect right here. So this disconnect is a 32 amp and it's rated for 440 volts. I'm actually going to swap this out. I didn't bring it over with me, but I do have another fuse that's rated for PV at a thousand volts. So I'm going to swap this out at some point. I just haven't gotten to it. And the wires run up and into the bottom of the grow watt. So this was just a quick video. I didn't really go too in depth. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below. I will respond. And again, subscribe, like, and thank you very much for watching.